wonderful people. Hello. Uh, my, <laughs> my Twitch isn't showing that I'm streaming yet, so hopefully I am. Um, and hello. <laughs> so let's get some more commissions done. I uh, had a fantastic time in Tampa with Yancey Street Comics. I love Yancey. They are the nicest people ever, and I had such a great time. Um, when I came back, there was a huge storm rolling in, and I get pressure headaches, so it knocked me on my back. <laughs> and so now I am back here. Hello, Comic Finders. No San Diego for me. I didn't sign up for this year. Um, I went for probably about, I think, four years in a row. Um, and I just needed a little San Diego break. <laughs> I love San Diego Comic-Con. It's amazing, but it's very intense. And so maybe I'll go next year. I'm still trying to see if I uh, feel like doing that one. Um, but for this year, it's great to be home. Uh, usually, not this time, but usually San Diego hits right over my two sons' birthdays. And so also I am usually a little... Um, Sad to miss their birthdays, needless to say. So um, now it is time to get going on some more commission work. And I take a long time for on commissions, as you guys can tell, because commissions are sort of my in and around work. I do it for a little break and then I get back to my normal work. So technically this week I am doing digital colors on an Ancient Dreams cover for Rothic. Um, and I'm waiting for one of the other pieces to be flatted. So I am working on the Harley Ivy Commission. And this one is really, really fun and I'm having a blast with it. So um, I also was given a gift card for uh, Copic.com by a wonderful human. And so I splurged a little bit and I got myself some new markers, only two new markers because I'm a little bit of a hoarder and I have a lot, <laughs> but I got a lot of refills and that's awesome because I am out of the color that I use for Ivy's hair and the marker was completely dry and my local comic books, I mean my local art stores did not have that refill color. So I got it, yes! Um, so I'm going to be working on coloring this one finally and I can finish her hair. So that is really exciting. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Glad to see you here. I am so sorry to everyone that I promised that I would do a live stream on Facebook over the weekend. Um, I had a lot more remarks than I was expecting to. Um, I was thinking maybe 2025. Um, and so that's what I kind of prepared my, my soul for. And when they did the final tally, it was 41. And then I added on three more. <laughs> so the, the final came to 44 remarks on the Batman 50, which was awesome. It really was a crash course for me on remarks. So I'm happy to have that under my belt, but I had to power through. So I really couldn't afford to stop at all, even to read comments or anything. I just blasted music and power drew. <laughs> Hello, Jason. Oh my goodness. I was just talking about you, Jason. I got some of my, um, I used one of the gift cards you sent me for Copic and I have the refill I need for Ivy's hair. So thank you so much. You are helping me finish this commission. I love you. You are awesome. And I got two new skin colors that I'm excited to try. Yeah, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Okay, so as far as working on this one, Harley is pretty much done. There's a few little things I'd like to do on her face, but for all intents and purposes, the um, she's finished. So um, I need to work on Ivy's skin color right now, and that's going to be a challenge because she's doing the, like, kissy lip you know, Instagram girl picture kind of pose. And as such, her cheeks make all the difference as far as finishing out what I'm trying to accomplish with her mouth, right? So that's gonna be a, a challenge all on its own and I'm really looking forward to trying this out. Oh wow, thank you so much, Jason. I better get going on printing the print for you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Mike. 
All right, so um, on some fun news, I have a new print hitting the website this evening. So if you are on my list, uh, definitely check your email because I have a new one coming out and I'm really excited about it. And um, for anyone who wants, you can uh, hit the, the MooBot thing and give it commands. For those of you on Boop Squad, you just do exclam boop. And then um, if you want to see some of the funny egg, uh, little uh, Easter eggs Dan has put in, you do exclam Dan. And then uh, for subscribe, it's exclam subscribe. Oh, I'm so glad you like the Nokomis, Robert. Mike always likes new stuff. <laughs> You're awesome. Okay, so um, in the end, what I want to do, because I accidentally was uh, talking and rested my red marker, and I have some red right up there, I'm going to do a little border around this piece anyway. Uh, so that little red dot just kind of confirmed what I was planning to do anyway, that I sure better put some kind of border around it since I screwed up right there. <laughs> We're going to make it seem like it was on purpose. Oh, hi, Kathy Russo. So nice to have you guys on here with me. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm feeling better. Thank God. I felt so shitty the last couple days. Pardon my language, but it was the, it's the only way to describe that migraine. Damn. I have, uh, I get, I was diagnosed as a kid with severe chronic migraines. So I get them all the time. I'm very used to them. However, the air pressure changes when a big weather pattern is coming in just knock me on my butt. <laughs> Am I coming to New York Comic Con? Not this year. I do it every other year. Uh, same with Denver, Emerald City, a lot of the places that are, um, they get a lot of people applying and I think I've noticed a little bit of a pattern that they, they do kind of uh, try to rotate the floor um, and as such I felt that my chances of getting in, A, are better if I go every other year and then also even for me and seeing everybody I'll have a lot more new product if I skip a year there'll be more stuff for me to to bring and to talk about and all of that stuff don't wear out my welcome all those wonderful reasons I go every other year yeah pulling all-nighters doesn't help too that's true <laughs> okay so, um, I am just going to get my Harley reference to make sure that her colors are correct. So I have that on the side over here. And some kissy faces too, because, and they're just photos that I found like stock images and stuff, cause it'll help me make sure that I'm doing the cheekbones correctly and all of those things. Yeah, the, the weather in Florida actually wasn't, really wasn't bad. The Florida weather didn't give me a headache. It's the Calgary weather that really gets me, um, and it gets me a lot. But you know what? For anyone out there who suffers from pressure headaches or sinus headaches, my dad told me a little trick, and I know this is way deviating, and I'm just going off in my own little rancho. <laughs> but DayQuil, it really helps. It's DayQuil is over-the-counter, and it's some kind of, um, it's for like, when you have a flu or something, but it really helps when you have pressure headaches. For some reason, I don't know if it has to do with your sinuses or whatever, but it really works for me. Okay, so I'm really excited. Um, this is my hex chart. For anyone who hasn't been on a uh, Copic coloring journey with me, this hex chart is vital. If you don't have one, I highly suggest that you get one if you work with Copic markers. Um, it is, it's called the Hex Chart, um, and it's made by a woman called Sandy Alnock. Um, and she has these charts for colored pencils, for Copic markers. They are glorious, and I have it and use it constantly for any commissions that I do, to be perfectly honest. I feel like I've lost my ability to choose color when I don't have it, slash Dawn has turned it into a crutch. <laughs> but um, before I had this, I was always testing colors on the side to make sure I'd picked the right one because the lids are not the best as far as indicating what you should use. Um, so I got two new colors. I got number 51, E51, and E53. 
and I've got to admit I'm really excited to use them. I'm not sure where and I probably shouldn't try them out on a commission of this magnitude, <laughs> as it were, without trying them just a little bit on the side. Yeah, I finally found it. It was downstairs. I just needed to like unpack my shit. <laughs> so um, I'm going to just use the ones that I always do just to be safe and not get myself stuck in a situation that I don't know how to fix on a piece like this, where the person has definitely um, had to wait for a while and, and, you know, it's not like it was extremely cheap and I don't want to screw up on it. <laughs> so um, I'm using my usuals. They are YR, four zeros are, is my bass tone, E41, E42, and E43. So this is in the, the level of how um, dark they are. And as you can see, the lids are a little bit deceiving. So always use your hex chart. And dab pads are a must. I have a new one. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting out with my YR four zeros. And I'm going to be doing the skin tone first and then all these little branches and leaves and stuff because they are darker and more saturated than the skin tone. I can just go right over the skin tone and it's not going to affect the colors. So I usually try to go from light to dark and do um, any details in layers of how dark they are. So hopefully I can put them on top of the skin color and on top of anything else like that. So let's just jump right into it and work on the face. Now, just so everybody knows, Copic marker dries quickly and it doesn't dry evenly if I try to work on an area that is already dried, meaning that Copic needs to be wet on wet if you want a smooth blend. So I'm not gonna be looking up and answering any questions while I'm working on her face. So feel free to, um, to just talk amongst yourselves or try out Mubot commands or whatever you want to do. Just have fun and I'll be back and looking up and reading as soon as I'm done with her face. Crossing fingers that it works. Oh, you did the, um, <laughs> the Dan one. Yay, I love that one. <laughs> So the first thing that I do is I actually fill the entire surface um, with this YR four zeros. It's a very, very light color. Once it dries, it pretty much goes to completely white. Um, so this works out really, really nicely for any skin tones and colors that I need to do because it gives me a nice wet surface to work with. And as always, be careful for black ink Try not to get any on your, uh, your brush nib. And so that's why I just kind of pat around those surfaces that are quite dark or have a decent amount of ink set down um, because it can drag and get on your, your brush. And it doesn't really matter in like places by her eyelashes and stuff that it's perfectly smooth because generally you're gonna add a bit more shadow around and on top of that particular area. So it's really completely fine that it's not fully filled in. And this section up here is kind of divided by her hair, which makes it really nice. I don't really have to worry about filling, filling that area in right now. All right, now she's sucking her cheeks in to do that kissy face look. So I'm still using the YR and four zeros, and I'm just using it to kind of start putting in shade. And for faces like this that I'm not super accustomed to doing, I do have um, some photos that I've looked at for reference on how the face goes when someone's making a kissy face like this. All right, now I'm switching to E41 now. 
to just keep darkening in the sections. And I'm putting down a whole area and then I'm going to take the YR four zeros and I'm going to use it to go around the edges of the E41 and blend it into the rest of the face. Yeah, kind of like duck lips, that's right. Now I'm using E42 and just doing a bit more of a blend because this part, of course, is more um, sunken in. And I'm blending it back out with the E41. And then I'm going to take some R00, which is the like cheek tone color that I use. And I'm going to use that to do a little bit more blending here. I'm using YR00 so that there isn't this harsh line here. I'm pulling it into itself a little bit. A little bit more E41. And YR00. More blending, more softening, all this stuff is very important to getting that smooth transition and the soft look that you're going for because, you know, she, you don't want her face to look mottled or um, like she's got really bad pock marks or some sort of skin disease. You do want it to look as smooth as possible. Oh, thank you so much, Adam. Hey, Keeman, just so you guys know, since you're just jumping in, I'm working on the face. And as you know, Copic marker tends to dry very, very quickly. And as such, I'm trying to get this part done uh, before the Copic marker dries. So I won't be looking up and seeing a ton of comments just right now while I'm working on this particular section. Um, but I will look up as soon as I'm done with it and catch up on any comments. So I'm using my usuals, which are the YR four zeros and then the E41, 42 and 43. And those are the colors I'm toggling between while I'm working on this, uh, this face. And because she's sticking her lips way, way out, um, there's going to be a decent shadow underneath her lips here. So I do a section that I know I need pretty dark with the, the next darker color, and then I blend it back out with the color that's underneath, like that lighter tone. So that's why I keep telling you guys which ones I'm switching to. So I'm using E42 to go a little bit darker under her lip. And E42 is also considerably warmer in tone. So it's got like a bit more of a like beigey brown undertone, which is really good for, um, for Ivy's skin color um, mixed with, you know, just normal. So like, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not focusing correctly and thus I'm not being clear. It's a good shade tone because of how light Ivy's skin is. All right, and I feel like now that it's drying, I'm seeing that this area needs a little bit more of a blend to it. So I'm going back in with E41 and just adding a bit more of a transition. Adding in a little bit more color into under her lip. Just needs that more shadow right there under the nose. 
She looks so fleshy. <laughs> Whoops, I bumped this, sorry. Yeah, that's a good thing, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All fleshy toned. So right now I'm using E42 because again, this is like under her nose, so it needs a good sharp shadow going on in there um, because those shadows really help to indicate, you know, um, it's a raised surface, but it's not being hit by the light. All of these things you're using to basically trick the eye into seeing uh, a 3D image that's really or a 2D image that's really only a, a single dimensional piece of paper. All right, so I was using E41 and E42 just now, and now I'm switching to the YR um, and four zeros to help blend everything again. And just more blend, blend, blend. All right, now I'm gonna switch over to this side over here on the other side of her face. And this side isn't getting quite as much light because the light source is kind of on this side of her face, meaning that there would be more shadow over here. And her nose would be casting a little bit of a shadow and all of that good stuff. So that was E41. Now I'm going to E42. Oh, this is E43. E42, here we go. And I have my trusty dab pad to my right. It's just off screen, but it is there. And before I do anything on the paper, I do a quick dab over on the dab pad to make sure that everything is good and there's nothing splooging out of the, the marker, which does happen and it is devastating when it does. So I'm just using E42, which is the exact same marker that I've done the last few um, shadow darkening layers on her nose. And I'm just doing a couple more because um, as you guys know, Copic marker dries lighter. So um, sometimes you do need to go back in and just re-darken it. And you can use the exact same marker because it's just basically putting another, another layer on it. You can think of marker, Copic markers as kind of like a, a sheer piece of cloth. And the more layers of sheer cloth you put on, the darker it appears, even though the cloth is all the same color. Yeah, ha Harley does, because Harley has that white, um, pearly white skin tone. So yeah, I can see how it would look a little bit like Lady Death. All right, and now I'm going to E41 just to blend out a little bit under Ivy's nose right here. There we go. And I'm putting a little bit of skin tone under Ivy's, um, uh, on Ivy's eyelids and stuff, but I do plan on going kind of all out with some makeup on her. And I'm avoiding a lot of the, um, the black lines and I'm just quite, not quite coloring to the edge. Um, and I think that makes it so that A, the Copic marker has some room to spread, and B, it, um, it keeps me from pulling and dragging the black and making a big mess. <laughs> All right, so then there's this one little section that I didn't color in yet. Um, so I'm just doing that right now, and it's such a small little section, I don't need to do a ton of underlay colors and stuff like that because all I need to do is just fill that teeny little bit. And now I'm using E43, which is kind of, for someone with a more white skin tone, uh, this is a really great color for adding in the darker shadows. Um, also, but if you were doing someone with more olive skin or darker skin, this would be one of the first markers that I use, and then I go more into browns. Oh, no worries, Tom. Thank you for being here at all. 
I totally understand that you all have jobs and lives and family and all those things that make it so you can't necessarily be here on time. <laughs> Don't worry about it, anyone. It is never a problem if you can't make it here right when I start. I'm working on my time frame, not on yours, and I understand that sometimes they don't quite mix. <laughs> hey, Harv, nice to see you on here. That's awesome, and I'm so glad you could make it. I have not forgotten about your commission. I'm just trying to catch up on some from shows that I didn't have enough time to do. I apologize, but yours is my next big one on the list. Oh, that's, that's a great way of looking at it, Harv. That is amazing because it's true. I, I really try and I think every commission helps me be better for the following one. So that is an awesome way to look at it. I love you, you're amazing. <laughs> oh, hello, Rick. Thank you, I'm so glad you're liking it. Guys, I, I am sure you'll notice that I tend to slouch. The more that I'm focused and concentrating, my shoulders go up and I slouch all weird-like. So I'm trying to work on my posture, but I'm a giant fail. Okay, so I think Ivy skin is done, woot. Now um, it's time for me to start working on her makeup and her lips, which are gonna be so much fun but I realized I spoke too soon and I just wanna put a little bit of shadow on this side of her forehead. So I'm just putting in a little tiny bit of R42 and then I'm blending it out with R41 and it makes a nice smooth um, transition. And then I have my YR four zeros, which is the lightest tone and I just blend everything out into that light tone. There we go. Okay, so I can put these um, markers down for a minute and get out the greens. Woohoo! And you know what? I think I took a picture of which greens I was using. Um, so hold, please. I'm just checking so that if I did that, I'll be so proud of myself. I did! Yes! Okay, so I was using YG63, G43. G43 and YG03. Yay, I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> Hello, Philip. How are you? Sorry, water. Am I going to tone down the gray on Harley? No, actually, I don't plan to. Um, I wouldn't know how to tone it down, really. Um, but Harley is white slash gray. So um, that is, in this particular version, she's like that all the way through. In some, only her face is painted white, but in the um, Harley's Little Black Book, comic book series, she is painted white from head to toe. Um, so I kind of got to keep her like that. <laughs> You're so proud, yay! Oh, thank you so much, Hans. That is so nice of you. <laughs> and hello to you, too. Okay, so these are the colors that I was using for Ivy's green, right? And just as a refresher, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them under the, the camera so you guys can see them. Hopefully you can see them. Um, these are the colors that I am using. So if you want to go ahead and grab a little snapshot of that, let me move this back so it can focus a little bit better. Um, so it's YG63, YG03, and G43. Um, I'm going to check and make sure, because on her eyes I may want to start with a little bit of a lighter tone and then blend out to some of the other ones. So I will... Um, I'm just gonna check that real quick. So as always, I use my trusty little hex chart. So I'm in this area for Ivy's colors and I'm just seeing if there is a lighter one that I could start with and yes, there is. 
G40 is probably good for just doing my lightest tone. I always start with light and then move to darker just to be safe. Hey, Louie from Tampa, how are you? It was nice to see you there. Oh, you did, Volupshus, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that you got it. Did you see what I added onto your ivy afterwards? I used some glitter pens, so like, move it around in the light and you'll see some glitter fun that I put on there. <laughs> Oh, that is so cool. Thank you so much, Nathan. It was so great to see you there. And I'm still like mind blown that your guys' birthdays are so close to my son's. That is so cool and happy early birthday to you. Oh, hey, David, how are you? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. Some of the older versions are grayish. Um, this one, honestly, it's just that I can't, I don't have white at my disposal for this. I, I need to use, cause it's on white paper kind of thing. Um, so that's why I did Harley like this, but I put a lot of purple undertones in her skin. I find that purple just helps to get, make her look a little bit, a little bit more alive, even though her skin is very much dead gray slash white bluish gray. Um, but it is, um, yeah, that's just, it is what she is on this one. You love when I add in the glitter surprises. Glitter surprise! <laughs> yeah, I was a little on the fence. I was worried you might mind that, Mike. Uh, it's kind of because on, a, on the account of the fact that my kids or somebody ruined my pink pen. Um, but this is what it is. It's a, called Art At You Spica. And they are made by the same uh, company that makes Copic Marker. Um, and you can get them at, on copic.com. And I got them at a Copic booth. And they are like, they're glittery, but it's super, super fine glitter. So it comes out in a little pen like this and I'm getting mad distracted. Um, but it's really just for fun for me and whoever gets the original. Cause I'll throw this in original sometimes just for glitter happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the best day ever in the comic world. Why? What happened? Oh, thank you so much, Louis. I saw your order. That was so awesome of you. And yes, my fulfillment warehouse rocks their lives. They are so, so cool and so good at it. They keep detailed lists of my stock. I mean, they rock, they're so good because I can assure you all that if I was the one handling the shipping, you'd have some serious wait time. <laughs> oh, that is so wonderful. Lots of love to Beatrice when you see this. Thank you so much for liking my work. I appreciate it. Oh, San Diego Comic-Con, true. And I'm missing it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they're, they're very, um, they're very discreet glitter. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for the eyeshadow. And this for me is the fun part. My personal little hobby is I love makeup. I love it. So, um, my little makeup situation is not little and putting makeup on characters is kind of me being able to scratch that distant thing I kind of wanted to do at one point in my life was be a makeup artist and so um, I get to do it on art and it's fantastic and I love it. So um, yeah, I have playtime with the makeup, I'm not gonna lie. So even with makeup, you start out with a nice base tone that's not super intense, and then you can start building up to the like vavoom. <laughs> Yay, that is so awesome, Harv. Seriously, I'm gonna see you at Baltimore. Woo, that is so great. Yay, more selfie time. <laughs> oh, that is 
is awesome, and love you lots, hun. Get some sleep. I'm so glad for once I'm not keeping you up late. <laughs> No, I'm a fail at nails. Check out my gnarly fingers. Yeah, I, I, can, I can't. And I'm, I would love, you know, sometimes I'll like look at a nail salon when I'm like driving by motivating to do something else. And I'm like, oh, it would be so fun to go get my nails done and make them look all pretty. And then I think about having to sit still for 45 minutes and I'm like, nope, carrying on living my life. Just no can do. <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward to Baltimore as well. I've never been there. I'm so excited. Um, and I don't know my table number yet, but I'll keep you all informed. And if you are not on my email list, you definitely want to get on for Baltimore Comic Con and for Cincinnati because I am... I have a whole plan for my commissions for those two shows. I am turning commissions over on their heads and I'm going to be offering a ton. So get on my email list if you haven't already and it's worth it. <laughs> Let me um, put that here. That was weird. Well, anyway, there's how you guys can subscribe. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> Wait till your hands have colors and use a ceiling spray. <laughs> That's right. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay. So more eyeshadow fun. This is just uber happiness for me. Yeah, artist hands, that's so true. My hands are such a gnarly disaster. Yeah, I can't I can't do it. I'm with you, Hans. Oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much about the the nails. That is much appreciated. I'm just not there now. But maybe next time. I wouldn't want her to have to do them for free, though. More than happy to pay for it. It's just the patience that I lack. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go with a slightly darker color. Let's see, YG03, where is it? No, YG63. So I'm kind of giving her a green smoky eye, which I think is very ivy appropriate. So I'm just doing it in levels where I go from light to dark. And Ivy has pretty green eyes, so that's going to be fun. And I'm just going so, so light because the section that I'm working in with this darker color is really, really tiny. And I just want almost like a thin eyeliner kind of look. So I'm, I'm barely touching it with the little teeny, teeny tip of the, of the brush tip or the brush nib. <laughs> All 
All right, so as we know, Copic markers dry lighter. So I may have to go in and add a little bit more to it later on, but at least the, the blending portions are finished. The, the smoothing as it goes out are, are there, right? And so if I need to add more to it afterwards, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Next time, thank you, that is so kind of you. <laughs> if J. Scott, got, J. Scott got his nails done. <laughs> All right. So for the eyes, because I the actual whites of the eyes are not, of course, completely white, but they do have a bit of a gray slash blue undertone, I use the cool grays for the eyes. My wrist is completely fine. Like, honestly... <clears throat> Doing all of the, the remarks and the uh, signings, they didn't hurt my wrist in the slightest. I get pain like in my shoulder blade. That's kind of like back there is where everything hurts me. Ha, <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> from the show, not the comic. Thank you. That's so nice of you, Harv. I've only done cosplay one time and to be honest, nobody got it. <laughs> I, um, it was in, I think it was like four years ago, right before I, I had just decided to grow my hair out. And so my hair was short in the sort of Roxy from Gen 13 style. And I used to have color in my hair. Um, so Nii suggested, well, before you grow out your hair, you should at least cosplay Roxy once. So I cosplayed Roxy and nobody got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one person was like, wow, Don, I thought you just really decided not to dress up today. <laughs> so um, my cosplaying lasted one time, not because I was remotely offended that people didn't get it at all. It's just, you know, getting ready and, and focusing on art and taking care of art and commissions and stock and all of that stuff is kind of enough for me. Um, I'm just really not, that's just another level I don't think I can get into. Plus cosplay, I don't feel comfortable in that kind of clothes. I'm a yoga pants person, but I did it one time and it was fun. And plus, at least Ro Roxy is basically wearing exercise clothes, so that was comfortable. <laughs> All right, and I'm using the glitter pen for fun. So she's gonna sparkle and shine. And I have a dark green uh, Copic glitter pen. So I'm just kind of doing it where she would have eyeliner because it's a little bit of a darker green. It's like a, an emerald green, but it'll really stand out um, right here. Help her eyes pop a little bit more it adds in that last little bit of darker color that I need. And this glitter is like super fine because it's coming out of essentially, I think a like ballpoint style um, nib, meaning that the glitter has to be like super, super fine in order for it to even come out of this pen. Um, but it is amazing and I love it and I get to use it here and it's nice and thin so I can I can add in that um, detail and darkness around her eyes. Woo! She's all smoky. <laughs> yes, ooh, shiny. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if any of you can see the little shiny bits and the glittery bits, but there they are. <laughs> My normal outfit this weekend looked like, uh, <laughs> look like cosplay yeah well I like to dress up it's super fun I just don't don't know that I can do like actual cosplay for real no oh, thank you so much Hans that was fun I I do like dressing up don't get me wrong you guys yay I'm glad she looks 3d that is wonderful that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> Oh, keep them, Louie. They're so much fun. All right, so yeah, these are the ones I use. They're called At You Spica. And it says, twinkling like stars. 
I love the Japanese English writing. It's hilarious. Okay, um, now I need to give her her eye color. So I'm going to start with YG03. And then I'm going to go to the darker one, which is YG63. Oh, I'm going to have to give, give that one a look. Let's see. What did Harv post? Oh, that's right. That was us. Back when I had red in my hair. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> That was 2015. Oh my God, time flies. All right, and I need a bit of a darker green, so I'm going to try this one. It's BG96. And even though you guys can't see that I'm doing it, definitely be aware that I am using my dab pad and always, always have one available. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just happen to find, find these really amazing and very, um, very absorbent napkins. And so I do swipe fancy napkins. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they're fantastic. It's a very interesting feeling cloth and I only find them every so often. So I usually take like two or three of them. <laughs> I'm like the napkin swiper, but I will be uh, getting some for myself, maybe even made because they're just so good. They must be had for all things dab pad. Because <laughs> I've tried napkins, I've tried you know, tissue, and it just doesn't quite work. The tissue sticks to the, to the markers, and, you know, it just turns into a bit of a mess. These are the best ones that I've found. Okay, yay, okay, Ivy's face is done. So now it's time to start working on the rest of her body. And, oh no, I forgot about her lips. Classic. All right, so for lips, I actually, if I'm going for the natural look, which I really like the sort of natural with just a little bit of gloss on, especially a makeup thing is if you have dark eyes and really smoky eyes, you go with a more natural lip. Now, Harley, she defies all laws. So Harley has the dark eyes and the red lips. Technically, you're not supposed to do that as far as makeup class has been told. Of course, there's no right or wrong way and everyone can do what they want. But you um, generally, the rule of thumb is if you are going for a dark smoky eye, then go with a lighter lip color. So I really like to do that. And I use what technically Copic sells as their skin tones, which are the E11 and E13 as lip color. They're just a little too peachy pink slightly too orange, and I have actually told this to Copic personally, so I'm not bitching behind their back. They're just a little bit too orange for my taste, or salmon colored. Um, so I, uh, I use them for lip color though, and they're fabulous. I know it depends on how much one colors, but how long do you find that a Copic marker lasts for? Copic markers for me last uh, a very long time, and the thing that's so great about Copic markers is every part of them is replaceable. So once you buy the actual marker, um, I've had some that I've never refilled before and I use them every so often. For like skin tone and red that I use, oops, all the time, it's, you know, I probably have to refill it twice during a commission. It really depends on how much I'm using them. Um, yes, I am the napkin bandit. Watch out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, um, the with Copic marker, the thing that I find them to actually in the end be cheaper than a lot of other markers is because you can refill them. And one refill um, lasts me about five years. And that's for a, a color I use constantly. So the refills are amazing. Um, and you can refill them as much as you want and refills themselves seem to last forever. It doesn't take much to refill a Copic marker. So they're very worth getting. Oh, thank you so much, Louie. Yes, that's right. 
I agree with you, Harv. Okay, so I'm starting with E11, and these ones I do overfill, and I think last time I did. Yes, Voluptuous, it's so worth it to get them. They are initially very expensive, but then once you're ba you're into the like refill zone, y you can't you can't beat it with Copic marker. Um, and then another thing to be aware of is my recommendation is that you start with a set of grays. I would say maybe get the toner grays, get used to Copic markers, and then start adding color as you need it, which is what was recommended to me, and I still think it was the most solid advice I ever got when it comes to Copic markers. Because when you're looking at having to get hundreds to start with, it's, it's crazy and it's a very expensive thing to get into. When you're buying one or two markers here and there, it's you know between five and seven, ten dollars, depending on where you live, then it's not so bad. You skip a Starbucks coffee and get yourself a Copic marker. They're literally about the same price. So, you know, do that and then slowly build your collection, which is what I did. And I've, um, you know, the first few commissions, first year or so, all I did was use grays. And then, you know, added a red and then added another red and stuff like that. And do it like that and it's a lot easier to, to get going with. Oh, that's awesome. So you already have some, that's awesome. I'm glad you like my skin tone preferences. That's so cool. Yay, I'm happy to help. I'm so glad that you agreed with my general choices. Thank you, hun. All right, so that is the base tone, and now I'm using E13 to darken it up a little bit. Yeah, don't forget the name, Copic, C-O-P-I-C. So now I'm just using the E11 um, and 13, and I'm just going back and forth between the two and doing some blending here. And personally, I feel that the E11 and 13 are just literally the best color for giving that natural glossy lip tone. Like to me, at first I felt like it was such a fail that I bought the skin tone set because I'm just like, oh my God, this, this skin colors just don't work for me. It's too orangey. I, I can't wrap my head around it. But then seriously, once I switched to using them as as these kind of color enhancers, using them for lip tone, using them actually to make more of a bronzy looking gold color. It just changed my Copic coloring life. So it was so worth getting. I just didn't use them for what they were intended for. Oh, thank you so much, Louie. Yes, I use Copic sketch markers. Sorry, everybody, I should have been clear about that. Um, Copic sketch markers are incredibly similar to Copic Chow, C-I-A-O, I think it is. Let me see. Technically, for all intents and purposes, they're exactly the same marker. It's just they are cheaper. I prefer having these ones because I, I keep all of my markers standing upright and so then I can see the number at the top. But if you're fine with having them like this and you don't need to reference the numbers from their lids, um, these ones are cheaper. And they're smaller, so they're easier to travel with. Like I know Sabine Rich really likes the Copic Chows. Um, I really like the sketch markers, but it's entirely up to you. They are refillable, their nibs are the same. It's all, for all intents and purposes, the same thing. Okay, I got to yapping, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to blend this. <laughs> oh, well.
There we go. I'm pretty happy with it, and that's rare for me. Yay! Uh, where, where can someone find my skin tone selection? You know what, that's a fantastic question. Um, I probably need to make that available somewhere. <laughs> Sorry guys, I, um, I don't know why it's seeming kind of dark. Maybe the, my room is getting a little dark here. I'm gonna open the window. There, maybe that'll help. <laughs> oh, hello, the frying pan. <laughs> okay, so now it's back to more um, skin color and it's time to work on Ivy's body. So this is going to be the fun part. Time to get working on her body. <laughs> Thank you so much, the frying pan. That is so awesome of you to say. I really appreciate that. Lots of love to you. You rock as well. All right, so like I told you all before, I have a very specific color set that I use for, um, for skin tones and I'll make a list of them and post them somewhere very soon because I should have done that ages ago. Um, is the hex chart viewable? It's right here. I just have it off screen. <laughs> yes, getting to work on her body. This is going to be awesome. Has anyone cosplayed my art? Yes. Um, uh, there's a girl named Aspen Cosplay and she has cosplayed the, um, the image that I have, it's of a girl named Claire, she's from Southern Nightgown, and she's holding a raven. I don't know if you've seen that image, maybe it cycles through here. Uh, there's a girl who's actually cosplayed that. You can see it on my Instagram account. Okay, so um, I start with why are four zeros? And I'm just filling the whole area. Because there's so much black ink work around here, I'm dabbing over it. I'm not dragging it because what can happen is the Copic marker picks up a little bit of that black and it just drags it like a giant streak across the skin. Even though I'm very cautious to use mark, uh, pens that technically are Copic safe, still I wouldn't trust it. I would be very careful around black. So just dab it around anything that's black. And because these sections are so broken up, I'm not too worried about um, needing it to be smooth. It's not quite like her face is, for instance, where it's just one big section. And if you end up with like a mottled look on her face, it looks really bad. Here, the smoothing is not as, crucial because there's so many small portions. That's right, I have seen that. Sorry, Jason, I completely forgot about that. Yes, also there's been cosplays, actually a fair few of the Lady Death Shimmer cover that I did. It was the first cover I ever did for Lady Death and there's been, I don't know, maybe four or five cosplay girls that have made it and they look amazing in it. Yeah, <laughs> we live kind of near a highway, so you hear a lot of uh, ambulances and police cars and stuff. So right now I'm using E41. Hello, the forest lord! Yay! <laughs> I 
So, um, because her neck is catching the light and the light source is coming from slightly above, her chin would be casting a decent shadow, which I think helps her not look so much like a giraffe. <laughs> uh, yes, they last me a long time. I've had it for, I've had these markers for ages. Oh, yay, I am so glad that you, um, that your sister loves the, the Batman 50. Thank you. So right now I'm using E42. It's sort of my um, second to darkest tone for people with fair skin. Whoops, and I just put a dot right on her neck. So I'm gonna take E41 and just fix that little mistake. And then I'll use E43, which is my darkest one and add in some drop shadows from all the, um, the plants and stuff. But I'll do that at the end once the Copic marker has dried because I actually don't want it to blend. Yes, the Forest Lord is Dan, that is correct. And for anyone who doesn't know who Dan is, Dan is my husband. As of next year, we'll be married 20 years. <laughs> oh, thank you, the frying pan. Oh, that is so awesome, Harv. Thank you so much. So now I'm using E41 to darken in this area. Some of these areas, they literally just need some skin tone and some shadow because Har Harley would be casting quite a bit of a shadow on Ivy here. Yeah, we're going to do it. That's a great idea to do a celebration stream next year for our 20th anniversary. <laughs> that would be awesome. So I'm using E42 right now because I don't know that I want this to be the very, very darkest color I have. I just want Harley to be casting a shadow on Ivy to show that she's standing in front of her. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your nap. Oh my God, Dan, an art show. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. <laughs> so, um, Ivy's hair will be the next thing on the list to do. And I haven't, um, I haven't inked in her hair in the back right here. Obviously, it would be trailing down her back. I just wanted to leave that a little softer looking so I didn't ink it. <laughs> oh, that would be fun, Harv. <laughs> If anything, we'd do another Twitch party style thing for our 20th anniversary, because that would be super fun. But I'm not committing to anything yet. We'll need to decide what we're going to do. Yes, well, 
uh, next year we'll be married for 20 years. <laughs> Sadly, Dan won't be coming to Baltimore. We don't have family living near to us here in Calgary, so Dan is, or the Forest Lord, is the one who manages the household and watches the kids while I'm gone. And I would not be able to be in comics at all if it weren't for him, so he is amazing. Oh, hello! C-0-M, oh God, I can't read your name. <laughs> I'm doing great though, thank you. <laughs> I hope you guys are all having a good week so far. All right, so now I have E43, which is literally the darkest color I'm using right now. And I'm using it as uh, shadows for wherever um, I think that the uh, there would be a darker shadow cast on Ivy or uh, on her skin. This one is a dark skin tone color. And for someone with uh, paler skin like Ivy has, um, or at least she's, you know, Caucasian skin, um, this is a very nice dark tone. Uh, for people with olive skin or darker skin tones, this would be one of the like mid-tone colors or even the base tone color. So it really depends on what um, color the skin is of the character you're, you're doing, but these markers will work on a range all the way. Yes, the Forest Lord is Dan, Jason. <laughs> All right, now to work on her shoulders, or her shoulder, singular. <laughs> oh, that is awesome, thank you so much. Oh, see you later, Hans, thank you for being here. <laughs> So again, I'm just being cautious around any inked portions. Yeah, Anne came and went. She, uh, she said she was going to sleep. She had an early morning tomorrow. So I want to um, show the lighting is hitting Ivy kind of from this direction. So as it goes down her arm and her arm goes behind Harley's, I'll start putting more shadows in. I just want to show that her, her shoulder is closer to us and her arm is kind of on her hip, but pointing backward a little bit. So all these little bits help to, um, to show that, that her, her arm is going back. Oh, that would be so fun, Harv. 
Yeah, it's it's my dream that one day Dan can come with me to shows. And you know, once the kids are older, that might be possible. Or if the grandparents come for a visit, hint, hint. <laughs> um, but you know, until then, it's just me. Well, I have a feeling that my E41 is running a little low on ink, but what I have is a second E41. Um, and the reason for this is that I ran out of refill. Uh, my refill ran out or I forgot to bring it to C2E2 a couple years ago. Copic had already sold out of E41 refills, but they had another E41 marker. So I was just like, oh, fuck it. And I had to buy a new marker, but it's been fantastic because E41 is like, my go-to staple color. Um, so having two of them is really good because the worst thing is being halfway done coloring a portion of skin and running out of marker and having to stop and refill could be disastrous to whatever place you're trying to work on, especially if the tones need to be smoothed out. Oof, it's the worst. So it has been very handy to have this second E41. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> You're awesome, Harv. Oh, and for anyone who's new on uh, watching me for today, um, I have a new print hitting the website tonight. So if you are on my email list, you're one of the lucky ones to be informed. I'm so tempted to spill the beans now and show you guys the print because I have a copy here um, and it printed really pretty. So of course I want to show you, but then I would be breaking my promise to email subscribers that they're the first ones to be notified of things and to see them. So um, if you're not on my email list, definitely sign up so you can get first notification on any new product that I have or new projects I'm working on um, for getting on my commission list because I have an idea for Baltimore and Cincinnati cons that are happening in September. It's worth getting on my email list for. <laughs> Okay, and I've switched back to E41. And because I'm trying to show that Ivy's arm is pointing backward and away from us, I'm gonna put a bit more shadow um, on this arm than I would if it was more in the light because the light is coming from about right here and Harley would be casting some shadow on Ivy over there. Oh, well, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you learned something new. That's what I'm here for. If you manage to um, take anything away from what I'm doing, that is so awesome. And if you have any questions at any point, just feel free to ask them to me, guys. Uh, sometimes I miss them if I don't happen to look up at the right time. But if I didn't answer your question, definitely just copy and paste it again and I'll see it at some point. Oh, uh, see you later, Scott. Have a good one. Lots of love to Lori. Yes, two more months to go. I am so excited about um, Cincinnati and Baltimore shows. And I'm doing Edmonton as well here in Canada. And that is a fun show, especially because I missed it last year. So I'm really looking forward to going back. So I just want Harley to be casting some shadow on Ivy right here. Oh, thank you so much, Robert. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Jason. Oh, 
Oh, you got your remarks? That is so great. I'm so happy to hear it. Yeah, Yancey, I got to give them massive amounts of props. I mean, they came, like, they drove over to the hotel and picked up remarks twice. Um, then they were picking them up as I was finishing them just to make sure that they were getting them out to you guys as quickly as they possibly could. They, they really took a lot of care to make sure that everyone who did their orders online or through eBay got them right away. Oh, thank you, Kathy Russo. Prime time, did you get a, um, did you get a back girl like you wanted? Scott? No, is it Scott or is it Philip? I haven't written Tucson Comic Con yet because I haven't had a chance, which means I may be failing. Um, so I really, really hope I haven't missed the opportunity. <laughs> I need to write them and apply. So it's 100% my bad in just being go, go, go and not managing to focus on the upcoming shows. <laughs> So it's a little bit of a fail on my part, but I will, um, I will be taking care of it now that I'm home for a little while. Uh, I'm a little bit behind. Oh, I hopefully will come back to Yancey as well. I love them. They are the coolest, nicest people. So whenever they want me to do an exclusive for them, I am there because they're so amazing. So this part of Ivy's hand is not facing the light, meaning that it would be in a little bit more of a shadow. And then it would be catching the light kind of on the top of her knuckles right around there. And I just, it's just a personal preference thing for me. I do prefer slightly longer skinny fingers like I really like the way that J. Scott Campbell draws hands and of course I'm I need to make them my own so I make them a little bit more realistic but still I do like long feminine fingers which I very much do not own myself <laughs> yeah they were they were on it with the books like they were packing them up the day that I started But they didn't in any way pressure me. I didn't feel like they were trying to hurry me along. They were so nice. Like on my end, I felt zero stress. But on their end, they were not stressed, but they were definitely motivating to fulfill their promise to start shipping them out right away. So it was really impressive how they handled all of that. Oh yeah, well, mar Copic markers are just so much easier for blending. That is for sure. Oh, that is awesome. I'm glad you got a bad girl. Oh, and a Harley and a Poison Ivy. Yay. I'm so happy to hear it. Oh, you got a bad girl too. Yay. That is so good. I'm happy to hear that. I'm glad that you guys are happy with them. It was, it was a fun challenge for sure. Oh, that's awesome, Night Raven. Thank you for ordering one. You love the marker I'm using, Ryuken? <laughs> well, I'm using a mixture between um, E41, 42, and 43. And they're just like my, my skin tone colors that I like to use. And I bought some new skin tone colors that are just going to be adding to my current loves. And I haven't tried them yet, though. So I'm really excited to try them 
sometime soon. I just didn't want to make that kind of experiment on a commission of uh, this size without trying it kind of on their own without any um, anyone expecting my usual from me. <laughs> so I'll probably just try them out on some doodle of my own or something like that and see how they look. But uh, yeah, these, I really do love the, this particular color range that I've uh, kind of found for myself as far as uh, what I use for skin tones. The Copic marker does, um, oh, you're Beatrice. Hello, Beatrice. <laughs> Thank you. So good to have you here. Um, yeah, the Copic markers that I uh, that Copic themselves sells, sells as a set for um, their skin tones are just not necessarily my favorite tones for skin. They're a little bit more salmon in color. Um, so it's, it's just a personal preference thing. I prefer to use something a little bit more tan. Um, so I kind of found the, this particular range of tones for myself because they were just ones I felt more comfortable with. <laughs> yes, get some for your pictures. I think that you'll you'll really enjoy them. And I'm here to help you when you get started because I do so many commissions of Copic markers. You can kind of get used to using them and all of that. Oh, thank you so much, Robert. All right, so now it's thighs time. And this is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge to sort of, to show that her, she's kind of leaning on this leg. So I wanna show that and not kind of screw it up at the same time. Um, and that can be a little bit tricky to show the weight bearing leg um, and still make it look pretty and attractive. So we'll see how this goes. And this is kind of a big section to fill. So the way that I can sort of help um, a bigger section like this not look streaky is I go back and forth in a bunch of different directions. And that really helps to to keep it from having that streaked marker look where you can see all the different lines that you drew. Hey, you're here. That is so great to see you, Jason. No, it's not Jason. What? Tazanuka, I need to find your thing. Now your name is like literally right on the tip of my tongue and I'm failing and I feel so bad. Justin, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. There's the Jasons and the Justins that I get everybody mixed up. You haven't been around in a while, or maybe it's that I haven't been around in a while. Okay, so now I've done the YR four zeros, and that's always my base tone, and now I'm switching to E41. So her hand is on her hip bone, and then the weight of her body is kind of going down like this, meaning that the highlight would kind of trail down the front. Well, it would go from like the side to the front because it's following her thigh bone. You've been gone. 
Oh man, I I still don't have everyone figured out. I uh, I'm sure I've probably made mistakes, and you guys have just been kind enough to not call me out on it. I'm really really trying. I do have a list, but I never uh, bring it up. So like I was about to go find the list to check up for Justin, and then I remembered. <laughs> Yes, of course, share away on this feed. That's so nice of you. Oh, thank you, Mego. <laughs> uh, thank you, Adam. All right, so I am still using E41 right now and I'm just kind of blending and then using the YR four zeros and then adding in some more E41 because I just want to get a nice smooth blend here and then start making this section with her leg get darker and darker. So that's what I'm working on now because it's kind of following her hip and then she's jutting out her butt and then here we'd start seeing the quad muscle because we are seeing the side of her thigh. And so it will be turning a little bit because her, her leg is kind of turned inward and then the weight is going on it. Okay, yes, I will, Jason. <laughs> as soon as I'm done with this thigh, I'll do an update on my list and make sure I've got everybody. Thank you all for your patience. I am so, so, so bad with names and I appreciate any of you who haven't been offended and upset with me. <laughs> You'd like to smoothly blend Poison Ivy? I've missed you, Justin. I think I need to refill some of my markers. They're drying out. All right, now I'm switching to E41. Hey, Recoil, I'm doing great. How are you? Okay, see you later, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Oh, I'm glad you're doing cool. Okay, so I think that part of her thigh is good. So I'm back to the YR four zeros. And that's what I'm using now to just get another portion of her thigh done. Now I'm switching to E41. And E42, that really needs a refill. And like I told some of you when I was first starting in on this one, I'm not too concerned that I'm coloring over the lines on all the little branches and stuff that she's got going around because they're dark enough that they're gonna actually cover and make the skin tone disappear underneath them. Me, um, no, I don't have a break in schedule yet. 
Technically this week I am working on digital colors. It's just I haven't set up Twitch for um, streaming digital colors yet. And to be honest, I want to get a little more comfortable with digital coloring before I start streaming it. <laughs> Truth be told, I'm a little chicken. Um, and so that's what I'm working on right now. And then after that, I have a Lady Death Hell Witch cover to do. Um, so I am pretty slammed on those things and I'm trying to wrap up these commissions. But then after those are done, then I have a little bit of breather time to start getting ahead hopefully on some work because I feel like right now I'm just kind of chasing one deadline to the next but I'm hoping to get a little breather probably in about two or three weeks fingers crossed oh thank you so much Louie <laughs> oh yes um Sundance Bird Birdman. Um, yes, her name is Nicomis. I work on a comic book series called Divinica, and each one is a one-shot about a um, goddess, and we're taking them from different pantheons of mythology. So our first one was about Aphrodite, and then issue number two was about Nicomis, and here in Canada you say First Nation goddess. I believe in the U.S. it's um, Native American goddess. And she's known as Nokomis to some tribes, and then as other tribes, she's known as Sky Grandmother. And so we kind of uh, combined the stories of Nokomis and how she was helping the warrior Hiawatha to find his spirit animal. So it's a, it's a one-shot story, and it's Divinica issue two. Oh, thank you, Revan Volt. Um, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you were able to see some of the process. That's awesome. I've been working on it in bits and pieces um, here and there. Um, uh, but I would probably have to say that I really enjoy coloring with Copic markers. It's kind of like the fun dessert at the end of a dinner. And I'm, I've got a sweet tooth and I love coloring. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Sundance. Am I an art witch? No, I just have a thing for skulls, I've got to admit. Well, that sounds neat. <laughs> Are you taking that from Wonder Woman? All right, before I do the, the other leg, I do need to refill E42. So we're going to do that now. More Lady Death, that's right. Okay, so I did, I was a good girl I was, and I cleaned my Copic marker plate. <laughs> so E42 refill time. And here is an E42. For anyone who was on my last stream with me, I went to, um, I, I went to refill a marker and I dropped my nib into it and I just had tons of dried old Copic drips on this tr this little tray. It was such a shameful mess and I ruined a nib because it fell in all of my old drips of random colors. So um, I became quite, it became very clear to me and everyone watching the stream that I really needed to clean my little refill tray. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, I can't unhear Chris Pine either. <laughs> That's true, there's only four. And I, I need to check with JP Roth on when she's planning to do a trade because technically three of them would fill a trade because we've got so much extra art and stuff to add to it. So I wanna, I wanna see what her plans are with that. Okay, so that refill is done. boy kips thank you so much for joining me here on twitch that's awesome you're not into dudes i don't know who you are who you see that's hot as hell. oh chris pine he sure is all right so then this is the back leg so it would have a lot more um 
Oh yes, yeah. speaking of Divinica books, <laughs> yes, I have all the Aphrodite pearls are on my website and they are running out. There were so few of them left of some of the versions and I just got new pearls printed for some of our newer rounds, but for now, here is one of the Divinica pearls. Now this one is just my copy that I have and it's hard to show you guys how pretty the paper is. This pearl paper is gorgeous. It's like, it's not glossy. So here it, with the light, it's gonna look like it's all glossy paper, but it isn't. It's the actual fibers themselves that kind of have an inner glow. It's, it's inside the paper that has this pretty shine. It isn't just on sitting on the surface. And they are all um, hand numbered and signed and there were only 25 of each of them and some of them there's literally only one left they're almost selling out so definitely go take a look at them check them out they are on my website and i'm going to be right back i'm going to take a short break and refill my water so everyone can take a look at this pearl print and i will be right back oh it did sell out today it sold out today. Oops, okay. So that one, there was one left, it's gone now. I'm back. All right, so let's do some more coloring. I am really hoping that maybe I would, um, I would, I will be able to finish this one today. Fingers crossed. I think I might. I, I think that we are on the war path and this is going to be done. <laughs> I know, Sherlock, the kids are home. It's summer break, so he hangs out with Vienna most of the time. She's my 13-year-old daughter, and Sherlock likes to hang out with her. Plus, I am working on the, the top floor, and it's really hot for Sherlock. He just lies on his back on anything tile or granite or glass because it's hot, and the poor cat has such thick fur, I think he's, he may be dying. <laughs> Not actually dying, guys, but you know, he's hot. It's just a figure of speech. Twitch didn't warn you, Lino Este. I am so sorry. That is so weird. Usually, Twitch is like really good about giving everyone notifications. Your name tattooed on the wifey's boob. <laughs> sorry, Lino Este. Okay, um, I'm moving the my uh, hex chart out of my way for a second so that you guys can see the thigh that I'm working on. And as always, I do have my trusty dab pad to the side of me. So even though you guys can't see it on the stream, it is there and I am using it constantly for anyone who has Copic markers that they are refilling themselves. Please always have a dab pad beside you. And um, use like the thickest paper towels you can, pretty much. I have managed to find some really amazing, very thick, awesome napkins. And whenever I find them, I swipe a few. <laughs> so I am the napkin bandit at the moment. <laughs> but definitely have a dab pad. Actually, even I've heard some horror stories from people who have a brand new marker and they open it and it just splooges everywhere. So um, definitely have yourself a dab pad that you can use to um, catch any excess ink that may be in the marker that's waiting to ruin your paper. Okay. 
and Copic marker tends to spread. So I'm leaving about half a millimeter all the way around um, Harley's thighs so that it will um, it can spread on its own without me accidentally pulling some of the red into Ivy's leg. That would be unfortunate and not look very good. All right, and now I'm gonna use E43, which is my darkest tone, and I keep all the markers resting in their lids in my hand so that I can switch between markers and not have to be opening and closing the lids all the time. <laughs> that is true, John Brock. <laughs> <laughs> True. tickling my nose. And I'm switching to E41 again. Just doing a bit more blend. There we go. All right, now I'm using E43 to just add in um, little bits of shadow here and there where it's needed to show um, like where her hand is on her thigh and all of that stuff. Um, Louis, I used to be a Canucks fan. Now I don't really follow hockey anymore. I just don't have the time. Yeah, I can believe you have a hockey team. <laughs> Isn't it illegal to not be a hockey fan? <laughs> okay. I almost forgot Ivy's back hand right there, so I'm going to get working on that right now. And I don't need the lightest tone because most of Ivy is actually co covered by Harvey, Harley, blech, my English. And so I'm just starting with E41 back here. I don't need the YR four zeros. And I intentionally left all of these breaks in Harley's hair so that your eye can connect the dots to show where Ivy's arm is going and it isn't just a floating hand back there.
All right, I don't know if you are on the live stream right now, but I want to do a, a shout out to Frederick Desso Desrosier. Thank you so much for your order. I really appreciate it. You got one of the um, the Pearl Prince, the Gaia one. Thank you, and also for getting the Lady Mechanica Rocketeer. Whoever you are on the stream or not, thank you so much for your order. I really appreciate it and I hope it reaches you soon. You don't think Harley's ever had a bad hairstyle? I agree, her hairstyles are awesome. All right, now I'm switching to E42. Whoops, I forgot two fingers. All right, E42, quick dab on the dab pad. Now I figure that most of her skin back here would be in shadow, so I'm pretty much covering it up with the E42. Right now I'm blending the E41. So I had the E42 and I put down some darker color and now I'm just blending it out with the E41 right now. Oh, see you later, Kathy Russo. Love you, hun. I'm so glad you're learning stuff, Louie. That makes me so happy. All right, so right now I'm mixing the E42 into the E43 to just help blend it out a little bit. So I'm switching between um, E42 and E43. I'm just I just laid down some E43. Now I'm blending it with the E42 to just smooth out the transition a little bit. More E42 right now is what I'm using. And then going back to E41. And as always, I do have my dab pad on my side just in case. There we go, Ivy skin is done, yay! <laughs> Total landslide for Har Harley, though, for Margot Robbie. Yes, it's Margot Robbie, and to me, it's a landslide for Margot Robbie. She, the casting could not be more perfect. Sure, Uma Thurman was great as Ivy, but there are a lot of other actresses, in my opinion, that can work as Ivy, and I know I'm not a gentleman in the room, but I'm still gonna talk. Uh, Margot Robbie, Robbie, it's not just how she acted, it's how she looks. And there's nothing you can do about how you look besides just being casted perfectly for the part and she rocked it. Yeah, I, I didn't really care for Uma as Ivy either. Okay, so now I am gonna do the little branches and leaves that are on Ivy's um, doodads everywhere, whatever those are. <laughs> 
All right, so right now I'm using YG03. I'm not entirely sure that this is what I'll stick with, but for now that's what's happening. And I'm using it to fill in all the leaves. you're back. <laughs> okay, Lino Este. Now it's time to do the little branches and stuff that are also around on Ivy. The belt came out great. Oh, thank you. Yay! Actually, I completely forgot that I need to put some shadows on the colors, so on the leaves. So right now I'm using YG63. It's called P Green, P E A Green. And I'm just putting a little dab in the center of every leaf to give it a little bit more of a. Um, a little bit more tone. And I actually am gonna put a little bit more darker green into Ivy's outfit as well. Some of these things, you know, you just don't really notice them until you're finished, or in some cases, um, you have to darken areas once it's dried, because Copic does dry lighter. Guys, I apologize, it looks like our neighbor is mowing their lawn, so it's gonna get loud. Yes, currently Harley and Ivy are kind of a couple, I think. You're right, Jason. Justin. So I'm adding in a little bit of darker tone into this. Technically, I think it's the exact same color that I was using before, um, but it's just going on a little darker. Like I explained about the sheer, sheer cloth, just the adding of multiple layers makes it seem darker. And that's kind of how Copic marker works. I just want to have a little bit more texture and um, tone. Even though I didn't draw in every single leaf, I do want to give that illusion that there are, this is comprised of many, many leaves all coming together to cover her body. Well, maybe they changed their mind about mowing. I don't know.
go. And I want to darken a little bit in Ivy's eyes as well. Okay. It's coming together. I'm so excited. All right. So I'm going to use my trusty hex chart for uh, color for the little vines. And I think I'm going to start with E55. It's this one right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. might be too light. I might have to go a little bit darker. Let's try E25. E25. Thank you, Tranquil Mist. I really appreciate that. Okay. Oh, enjoy working on your stream. Oh, see you later, Adam. Thank you for hanging out as long as you could. Have a great work night tonight. Sorry you have to work late. <laughs> and yes, Justin's going to give you all a table. <laughs> Viking, how are you? I'm sorry that I haven't worked out a schedule yet. I think I'm gonna have to do an actual concrete schedule once the kids are back in school. <laughs> but I promise I will soon. How have you been? All right, now it's time for Ivy's hair. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm gonna do my usual on this one and use the vermilion, which is, where is it? Here we go. It's R08. It's actually a new color that I've just recently acquired and I really love it. And I haven't been able to use it because I used the marker dry and my local art store didn't have a refill. But Jason Coates is awesome and he gave me a uh, coupon for Copic.com. And I was able to 
get it shipped to Yancey Street, who saved the, the my order for me, and now I have a refill. So it was a little bit of a, you know, trip around <laughs> all over the place in order to get a refill for this marker to finish this commission and the other Ivy commission that I'm working on. So, you know, sometimes when you don't have the right tool, it takes a while to get it, but of course it's always worth it. Oh, thank you. And hello, Urban Vikings wife. Thank you for watching. I am just refilling a marker and then I'll get going on Ivy's hair. Oh, tell you about being outside my comfort zone with that one. It just took a very, very, very long time to figure it all out. <laughs> all right, I'm trying to not overfill this one, so I'm actually not going to wait until it has drips coming out the other side. All right, so there we go. The marker is refilled and I'm very, very excited about using it. Now I used this one until it was so dry, the nib itself was starting to like look white. So I just added a little bit more color onto the nib itself. And yes, guys, I have very messy markers. I need to take like half a day and clean them all. But as soon as I clean them, they're gonna get messy again because I use them to use them, not to keep them pretty. <laughs> Okay, away goes my refill and my little table. This used to I mean my little plate. This used to be one of my kids' plates, but now that they've grown um, they've grown out of little kiddo plates, I've uh, changed it to using it for Copic. So I wrote Copic on the back to make sure it didn't accidentally end up back in our kitchen dishes. <laughs> Her name is Urban Shield Maiden. Oh no, that's Dan talking. <laughs> <laughs> nib is a great word yes i didn't come up with it though <laughs> all right so this is vermilion and it's a very bright orange but it really pops for ivy's hair so i'm kind of using this to, to emulate a little bit of the way uma thurman's hair and makeup really were kind of like in the um that batman movie she was in which one is it batman forever your son would still eat off that plate. <laughs> oh, was I showing Copic backwards like a fail? Classic. I guess Uma had like leaves as eyebrows and stuff. I didn't do that, but you know, she definitely had a lot more of the glam look going than the a la natural look going. And I, I definitely like the glam look for Ivy. So even though I am saturating the whole section of hair with this vermilion, vermilion um, I am trying to follow the direction of her hair a little bit because when it dries, you can see lines or some texture. And so it's nice if that texture and any places I go over twice or whatever is following the direction that I've drawn in her hair. Um, and that really helps to, you know, carry on with it looking believable and natural. If I were to say, fill in the lines sideways like this, it wouldn't look like her hair is flowing. Urban Viking, the forest lord is my husband, just FYI. <laughs> and he's very into Viking stuff. <laughs> I would agree with your wife and be like, no thank you for that name. <laughs> I gotta admit. <laughs>
film would have to have a dramatic flashback to my first pair of sleeves. Guys, I'm so bummed because my, my precious sleeves that were like, Lululemon doesn't sell them anymore. I was signing with a silver marker at Yancey this weekend and look, it just got destroyed, just completely covered in silver marker. I'm so sad. How I do this without smudging? Um, you gotta, as far as the Copic marker picking up the ink, is that what your wife means? When will which publication be released? I know, my sleeves, I'm so bummed. I, and I, there's no way for me to get a new one. <laughs> I'm so sad. Um, as far as not smudging the ink, I use pens that I know work with Copic marker and they don't bleed. And that is a huge one to it not smudging. And I wear these sleeves to protect my paper from um, smudging, like my hands smudging it. Uh, your skin, as yucky as this sounds, your skin does have oil. And even the smallest amount of oil coming from your skin, especially if your hand is resting on a piece of paper for hours on end, uh, the heat from your hand, any of that stuff that transfers to the paper can make it smudge, can make the paper itself not absorb properly, it can warp the paper. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, so I wear these to protect the paper from my skin. The ink dries so fast. It's uh, This particular type of marker is alcohol based, like rubbing alcohol kind of based. And so it dries so fast, it's not like paint transfer or anything like that. You really can't smudge it. Oh, this one, this is not a cover, this is a commission. It would be so fun if it was a cover, but it isn't. All right, so I also left this portion back here blank, even though I was planning on filling it with Ivy's hair color. I just didn't feel like it was necessary to add in all those extra colors and stuff back here. And I'll make a little bit of that for Ivy's hair. And then I've got her hair, I want it curling all the way down behind her back too. Oh, thank you, Fruit Jam. Yeah, oh, I understand about drawing on a tablet for sure. Yes, I use these gloves and these markers and they don't, they don't, these don't bleed. Well, they bleed through, you can see that. This is the back of the paper. <laughs> but um, as far as smearing, no, they don't smear. True. B-boy, that's a good point. I should just wear them with pride. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just gonna fill in a little bit of color back here because I want Ivy's hair to be all curling and all the way down her back here. Ivy has nice long hair and I think it'll look really pretty if it's just kind of loose back here, which is why I didn't wanna ink this part. It's this whole area is quite full, so I felt like adding ink lines would just be one detail too much here. So that's why I'm just going to kind of wing it with her hair in the back. And I'll add more form and stuff once I start getting into um, the, the darker tones that I'm going to be adding into her hair afterwards. I guess her hair would kind of curl around and just kind of rest down there. I'm kind of thinking that it's a rounded cut at the bottom, so it wouldn't be super full all the way out to here. But I'm on the fence about that, so I'll still keep thinking about it until I decide if that's good. 
That's a good idea, Justin. Maybe I should do that to sort of make it look like it was an intentional smudge. I think I may even still have some marker. Yeah, I still have some silver residue here. It took me days to wash it off. Okay, so what I'm using as far as the next shade darker is number E07. It's called Light Mahogany. It's this one right here, E07. So on the lids, they don't really look that different in tone, but you can see R08 as compared to E07. This one's quite a bit darker, and it's still got that reddish undertone, which is perfect for Ivy's hair. So I'm going to use it in all of these shadowy parts to help it look like it's, you know, behind things and not all of her hair is all on the exact same plane because that's what really makes it look like a sticker. And I'm not trying to go for the sticker look. Oops, I went over the paper a little bit. I do this full time. I am a comic artist full time. I also am a mom of three. So I um, am also a stay at home mom, but generally my kids are in school because they're all a little bit older. So um, I'm able to do a full work day from home, which is fantastic because then I can be there for the kids if they need me. But on the overall, I am a full time comic book artist. Yes. So usually I draw girls with like flowing hair that's like blowing in the wind and stuff like that. So it's almost kind of weirding my mind out a little bit that her hair is just kind of hanging down straight. Like there's no wind, there's nothing going on that's like pulling her hair all over the place. Um, but it is, it is a good exercise for me to do something different. And I'm not trying to be like, yes, it's Harley and Ivy's hair and they're also there. <laughs> you know how it is? Um, so I am, I am going for the hair not being the like main attraction. Uh, but it's kind of weird for me, I'm not gonna lie. I, I intentionally did it this way and I don't wanna change it. It's just I'm so used to like taking some swoosh and being all dramatic with the hair. So it's a different look for me. Oh, I totally understand that as far as finding the time. It is really hard. Sometimes I'll be like, I have the whole day to, to draw and then I end up having more than half the day that I spent answering emails. You know, it's getting that art time is difficult, even if it's your full-time job, it's crazy. <laughs> yes, Dan is a successful stick figurist, that is true. Oh, uh, Urban Viking, I see what you're saying. I don't know if Dan is still here, but he uh, is a computer guy. <laughs> Uh, 
and also very much a uh, stick figurist. <laughs> So just a little highlight back there, because uh, again, I'm not trying to have the back portion of Ivy's hair really stand out. It's just kind of there to show that, yes, she does have hair on the other side. She hasn't shaved the back of her head or anything like that, but I'm just not trying to make their hair be the, the center point and focal point of this, this piece, because I want their hands and the whole finger throwing thing that they're doing is is the main focus of it not their hair or their outfits or anything like that Dan is an amazing manager. I get really confused. Like when I have a bunch of different things to, that I need to be doing, I have like three running deadlines. Some are more timely than others, but some I kind of feel like I should get done first or then like six commissions I'm halfway done with. I, I get really confused and overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. So Dan kind of helps focus me into what is what's you know, okay, so this is what you should do today and not this and don't worry about that. And it's so helpful because otherwise I'll just like spin my wheels. <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't go to school for this. I am self-taught and yeah, it's a passion that turned into a career and I'm so grateful. I know that makes me sound like such a care bear, but it's true. I really am grateful that I get to work from home and draw all the time. <laughs> yes, a professional Don Wrangler, Wrangler, and I'm a whole thing, believe me. <laughs> Hello, Kylie, how's it going? All right, so I just want to smooth out a few little parts up here that I feel I went a little too harsh in my coloring. And add a little bit of color to or shadow to this little curl right here so it stands out. And then I'm going to get sort of like a reddish brown, maybe the color of these little uh, branches for her eyebrows. I intentionally don't completely fill in eyebrows with black pen all the way through because I feel like it's just too much. Um, nobody has like solid black eyebrows with no little hairs that you can see and stuff like that. So I kind of draw in little tick tick hair marks or hair strokes in the eyebrows and then I fill the rest in with color. The Michael Jackson curl. I didn't even think of that, but you're so right. <laughs> oh, I know, Kylie. I should just make a print out my little list that I have to sort of give everyone a refresher. Tazanuka is Justin. <laughs> Or Tazanoka. Yes, this is Kylie.
see blue. Oh my god. Okay, I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I love this, Dan. The hottest new digicolorist on the scene. Underground sensation about to go mainstream. <laughs> I love it. Oh, sorry, Kylie. Are you so tired? All right, so one little thing I need to fix is that I still need to add in her buckles right there. Lord is so good for your ego. <laughs> it's awesome, Kylie. You deserve it. Mega congratulations to Kylie. If you guys want to follow her, she's the Art of Kylie Knight on Facebook. And she's been studying digital colors and getting into it. And she just got uh, given a tryout by Ryan Kincaid, who's a cover artist in the comic book industry. So congratulations to Kylie. How's the two-year backlog? <laughs> I'm very sorry. Hopefully I will be making some more progress on it, but right now it's not going great. Oh, I love you too, hon. The Art of Kylie. K-Y-L-I-E. K-N-I-G-H-T. So it's knight as in knights in armor. And she's a great place to follow if you are um, trying to get into digital comic coloring because she's on that journey herself. And she's documenting what she's doing um, and different assignments that I send her to work on, but she's already getting picked up by people and tryouts and stuff. So it's amazing to see, and I am so impressed with her. Hello, Latomir. <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure out, um, I'm gonna have to figure out who you are. I need to go get my little uh, trusty hand handbook on everyone's names. I know you're someone I should know. Oh, William Russell. There we go. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm a fail. Oh, you found it. Thank you. I'm glad you found Kylie. So as usual, I have to go through and darken up a few spots. Thank you for your patience. You guys are so nice. Yes, William is the guy who does Venom. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I think all of my white, oh no, they're not all packed up. I found one. All right, so kind of one of the little last pulling all the pieces together is using my little gel pen. And it just adds that last little pop that helps to make things kind of all come together. So like right here, this is a zipper, at least in my, in my mind it is. So I'm just putting a few little spots where it's catching the light. And then there'll just be a few little other areas. Cause while this is, I'm not making it super shiny leather, there are places where it would catch the light and I think it looks nice to have those extra pops of color or highlight in this case. And for that, I use a Sakura Jelly Roll pen. Um, I've gotten mine at Michael's. I think you can get them at Hobby Lobby in the US. They just don't have Hobby Lobby here in Canada. Um, I'm sure you can find them at your local art stores as well. I just uh, get them at Michael's. And I have them in many different colors, but of course white is the most handy one that I use all the time for things like this. It just helps make it pop and look um, it just makes it look more like latex, even if I'm not going for the super extreme latex. And I, I'm getting notifications that new people are following me. Thank you so much for the follows. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm so happy whenever I see a new follow on Twitch. I still feel like very, um, small time and I'm hoping to get a bigger following on here. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I guess the main thing to watch out for when you're working with jelly roll pens is they do take a few minutes to dry. So you want to watch out if you're working um, all around on them. I've done it where I've smudged it or I've like <laughs> ruined the whole look I was going for because I dragged the color the wrong way and stuff like that. So just watch out if you're using these pens because they do take a minute to dry. But they're quite fantastic for showing highlights and helping make things pop a little bit. You've smooshed a jelly roll. <laughs> I feel that I feel you on that one, Kylie. It's the worst. Yes, it does make me feel all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Alright, so that's dry now, so I can work on this other side. you like it <laughs> yes it's a pen Justin it's by Sakura and it's called the jelly roll <laughs> again a Japanese product gotta love them
There we go. Oh, this is fun. I'm almost finished. I can't believe it. Yeah, Sakura does make the best gel pens. Oh my god, Rihanna, I can't wait to see them. Thank you so much, love. No, I haven't figured out what border I'm doing. I need to, though. It's kind of running in the back of my mind right now, being like, I am so close to being done, and I have no idea what I'm going to do for that border. <laughs> Damn it. Shh, I said that under my breath. I really don't know. I got nothing. All right, now to put the highlights on Ivy's eyes. Go. A little glossy highlight on her lip gloss. Ooh, yes. And I'm thinking to maybe help some of the leaves stand out by just doing little highlights on them in a few places. bit of texture on the um, branches. I need a water break. That is true. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not using liquid mask on this one. I don't really need it. Oh, and I want her nails to have a little bit of highlight on them to help them pop. Lucia. Oh, thank you so much, Ro Rogerio. <laughs> the nails are popping. Yay. I still need to give uh, Harley her red nails because she usually has red ones. And I just haven't gotten around to doing that. So wow, I am almost done. This is so awesome. Hey, true dead man. Yeah, I really better figure out what I'm doing on the background kind of right away. Ooh, I have one more thing I just realized I forgot to do. And that is some shadows from the leaves and everything over here on her thigh. For some reason, it really wasn't looking to me like it, it just looked like a sticker, and now I know why. I didn't actually put any shadow to connect the, um, the little branches and leaves to her actual thigh. So that's my bad for forgetting that. Fixing now. 
Oh, guys. So, the the one night I just listened to music and worked on the remarks, but then um, the last night, like on Sunday night, I just had to keep myself awake, and music wasn't working to keep me awake, uh, no matter how loudly I blared it. So I turned on um, iZombie, and I just finished the whole season four in one night, <laughs> and it was so much fun. I really enjoy iZombie, which is weird because I don't watch anything with zombies. Zombies freak me out, but iZombie doesn't. I find it really f funny and comical, and I think the girl is hilarious. And so um, I watched all of season four, and it's awesome. I loved it. Oh no, I'm so sorry, Kylie. You got your remarks? Okay, so what was it like and which one did you get? <laughs> Thank you all so much for letting me know that you're getting your remarks. That makes me so happy to hear. And you know, then I'm a rele relieved that they're reaching people and stuff. So thank you for telling me. You got Batgirl? Oh, yay! That's awesome. That's weird, Justin, yeah. I just don't, it, to me it's so comical, I don't really even think about it. What time is it, 426? All right, let's do, just need a pencil here so I can make sure to sketch out Har Harley's nails in the right place. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the show, but, you know, I totally understand about zombie issues because I have them big time. I've never watched The Walking Dead. When zomb the zombie dress-up craze was really going on, it was terrifying for me to be at San Diego Comic-Con. I had somebody at my table who, like, literally had a prosthetic eye hanging out of their face, and then they wanted a photo. And I just looked at them like, really? <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It really is funny. No, my kiddos aren't back to school in until the first week of September, or maybe it was the second week. Oh, hey, Ted. <laughs> Thank you for telling me who you are. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm having a hard time remembering everybody and putting it all together. You guys are so awesome to tell me. Thank you. And it's good to see you again, Ted, or at least be talking with you. Okay, so I actually did not draw Harley's nails in. I'm just kind of doing it at the end as an afterthought. It's all good. We'll live. I kind of wasn't planning on drawing nails on her. I'm going for the more bendy, cartoony fingers. But she has the red nails, and it's important to put them in. And I'll give them a nice little white highlight. <laughs> the, the, yes, that's so right, Justin. Oh, you'd start an intern class. <laughs> Yours went back Monday. That's crazy. Yeah, mine, it's a uh, summer break is about nine weeks here, I think. Steve, hello, how are you? All right, the girls are finished. Woo! So I'm gonna take a momentary celebration break. <laughs> Refill my cool, cold water. I hate it when the water gets warm and right now it is hot AF in here. And then I will be back. 
to work on the border. So if anyone has any ideas or suggestions, I'm gonna leave this here so you can all think. <laughs> do my work for me. I kid, I'll probably do like diamonds and ivy leaves running all around. So like the Harley diamonds and the ivy leaves and I'll just kind of fill the border with that. But I'm just gonna take a momentary celebration break <laughs> and get some cold water because I hate warm water. I'll be right back. You guys are awesome. It's so fun to be on the live with you. I will not be gone more than two minutes to just get cold water. I'll see you in a second. I am back. Oh, that is so awesome. Congratulations about going live, William. Are you enjoying it? <laughs> and I'll... All right, so I'm just gonna draw in some ivy leaves and some Harley diamonds. And there's gonna have to be a Harley diamond right here because <laughs> that's where I drew one. And I'm probably not gonna fill the whole thing. I'm gonna make it kind of abstract, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there, maybe just in the corners because filling it up too, too much is just gonna be too much. So I'm gonna just do the corners. Dawn with an Afro, what? <laughs> oh, about Bob Ross. Oh, thank you for calling me the Bob Ross of Copics. That's awesome. Aw, I should get one. <laughs> Hello, Alchronist. Thank you for being here. A little waterfall, some happy trees. <laughs> And I'm not gonna ink these in, I'm just gonna do them in color because I think inked would be a little bit too much, too strong. Um, and I just wanna have it light and simple and not too much. The idea of going live terrifies you. Honestly, Kylie, it terrified me too. Uh, the first time Dan just picked up the camera and started filming, and then for the first few times that I was doing it on my own, I literally had my camera there ready to start and I like panic paced for like 20 minutes because I couldn't push the start live button. So I totally get it. It just takes a little time to get used to and then it's just completely normal and all is chill. <laughs> oh wow, it's 12.30 in France. Thank you for being here, Jekyll. No, it's not just you, it's very terrifying. It takes a little while to get used to for sure. It's the, it's the whole thing, like, what if I make a mistake? What if this? What if that? It's, it's, it's hard to be on camera. It's hard, you know, and then for me being actually seen on camera, and I'll be honest, you guys, sometimes I run out of screen because I, my skin just starts looking really shiny and it really bothers me. So I have to go like pat my skin so I don't feel like I look like I'm shining like some weird light. Um, and so yeah, it takes a little while 
and then you're used to it and everything is fine and you know you guys have made it so easy for me to be on lives and then that you followed me here to twitch I, I really appreciate it it's been so much fun to just art with you all you've helped me with great ideas it's just become such a fun community and i so appreciate all of you who are here Yeah, a highlight to the gods. <laughs> yes, my face. It's the worst. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> the real spin. That's a great idea, but that's just so much work. I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, you gotta get you some super smooth cougar. I'm also looking for an alternate paper that's close enough, so when I come up with something, I'll definitely keep you guys posted. No, you can't find it on Blick. It's, um, it's like a specialty paper that I think is pretty much only sold to printers. Um, so I'm trying to find an alternate so that I can make a good recommendation to you guys. Okay, so this Harley, she also has stars. So I'm gonna do kind of her diamonds and stars on this side. some of Harley's other um, other little images and stuff. Okay, so I'm just looking up Harley right now just to see what other things she has. Oh, so she has like the the picture on the edge of her um, of her big hammer thing. So maybe I can do something like that, like a little face or something. Let me see. I'm gonna do Harley's Harley's hammer. Yeah, so it's like a little face with crossed out eyes. That's super cute. So maybe I'll do like a little happy face. Wow, that is loud and intense and unnecessary. Oh, have a nice day. Is someone leaving? Well, thank you, D Dina Lee. <laughs> Coloring is fun, that's for sure. Thank you so much for being on here on the stream with me. Ivy looks a little bit like me. That's funny, I don't see it. Oh, the smiley face is known as have a nice day. Okay, thank you. Oh, guys, look, check this out. It was in my, um, my, my uh, art pencil case. This was my 
to-do list as far as the remarks. So I made little tick marks for all the ones that I had done and how many I had done of each of them so that I kept a, a basic even amount and I didn't do too many. And then for each one that I finished and signed and bagged, it I could check off the little check boxes. I'm a little like OCD about check boxes and to-do lists and stuff like that. So this helped me keep track of how many I'd drawn and how many of each I had done. Most people that wrote me that had asked for a remark had specifically said they wanted any of the four girls. I didn't get anyone actually telling me they wanted a Batman or a Joker. So I just added those ones in so that I could have a few of them in there. Um, for anyone who might like it or kind of so I wouldn't get flack for not drawing dudes. <laughs> but then uh, I drew a bunch of the bad girl Harley, Ivy, and Catwoman because anyone that contacted me and told me what they were hoping for, it was any of those four girls. And this was for me to keep track of how many I finished. So this is my little happiness chart of finishing all of my sketches for the Remark weekend. Uh, I may have a to-do list for my to-do lists. <laughs> I'll show you guys my actual to-do list at some point. Oh, really? That's so cool, William. Yay! <laughs> I have a problem. I agree, Justin. I do have a problem. Okay. So I'm gonna put the little have a nice day face over here. And then I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna do um, Harley ones on the top right, I mean the top left and the bottom right corners. And then I'm gonna do Ivy ones on the top um, right and bottom left corners. No, that's awesome. I can't wait to see it. All right, let me take a look at this have a nice day hammer again. All right. And Harley is three diamonds, so I'm going to remove one of them right there. And just put a singular diamond right here. Another one over there. Okay, and then an ivy border. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that, William. Then I don't have to do so many. Yeah, I really like that. And then put the ivy one down at the bottom. That's a fantastic plan. So ivy leaves. Something like that. So I just did a little squirrely uh, ivy um, border vine. And then I'll do um, some leaves coming off of it.
Thank you. That was such a good idea, William. And then maybe I'll just do a little splatter on either end in the corner. Now that's super genius, William. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I knew what you meant. Well, it looks like I might have to ink these because um, it might not, there's a little more detail than I was planning on, so I might need to get these inked in. Uh, did I have fun at the si signing? I had a blast. It was so, so fun. Yes, the patented Don McSplat. That's right. Uh, thanks a ton, William. I'm so glad that you were on the stream for a little while. You helped me come up with a good plan. Lots of love to you and enjoy your stream tonight. I'm gonna do a few little cuts into this little happy face so that um, it's clear that it's sort of the end of a hammer or the edge of a hammer. And then some splatters can be there for Harley's side. And then over here is the Ivy side. Now I'm wondering though if I need to even this out a little bit more, just something. Perhaps this diamond is just too big. Oh, Copic question. Um, you want to do big red splats. I still okay commission you don't have a refill do you have any like acrylic paint or anything like that because I'd say in a pinch you can also use acrylic paint Am <laughs> okay, 
So now it's time to ink these and that should go nice and fast. So I even have a Copic multi liner in green. So I'm going to go ahead and use that for the ivy leaves. When will I hit San Diego again? Maybe next year. I still need to think, think about it. <laughs> No, you didn't scare Dan away. He just has to uh, take Lyndon to a class. So he has his, um, he has other daddy duties to get to. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so glad you like the border design. Yay. Justin, you're like Chandler on, on Friends. Oh, she said duties. <laughs> and I mean that in the best way possible. I love Chandler. All right, so there we go. The ivy leaves are done. Woot woot. <laughs> All right, and then for the little face, whatever it's called, the have a nice day face. I'll do the the exterior in in a sepia tone, and then I'll do the the rest in black. People wanting to exchange money for food and not during dawn time. Aw. <laughs> so I don't want the stars to be perfect. It will lose some of that crazy look if the stars are like way, way, way too well done. So um, I'm intentionally making them look a little bit crazy. <sighs> Yep, 
It's because heroes and villains need to be more exaggerated. And so it takes a little while to get used to being comfortable with that exaggeration element. But as you, as you do it more, you will get more used to it and you'll have that, that confidence to put in the exaggerations that are needed. Like the really crazy powerful looking bodies and all that kind of stuff. The strong poses. It's all about putting in the time and the practice to get those things down. Nah, I'm gonna have to make that a black diamond because I just went off the line. Okay, one tiny last little check on this hammer to see how it's done. All right, so I'm gonna get a thicker pen and kind of go a little more intense on this. All right, I'll be able to see your comments again. I just wanted to check that out. <laughs> oh, thank you, Yura. All right, I'll take a look about Edmonton. Did you message me on my personal page or my art page? Also, who is this? So I know what to look for. I get a lot of messages all the time and I can't always keep up with them, which I apologize to everyone for. I wish I had like full-time help to read my emails for me. That would be awesome. <laughs> Okay. Hello, Neil. <laughs> I do need an artist minion. <laughs> oh, hello. Jinhan Labs is Will, right? All right. Time to do the little smiley face dealio. Mm, that is even too dark, damn.
So right now I'm using E40, which is actually a color I pretty much never use. I was hoping it would be the perfect lighter tone to E41, but it's too gray to work with E41 as a skin tone, which is weird since it's just the next color down. Um, so I bought it and never use it, but it seems to be perfect for right here. <laughs> that is so awesome of you, Mike. Thank you. All right, so now I'm using E41 to just make it look a little bit more like wood. And I will do a colored outline around that little face, or maybe I'll just do that now, like a dark brown. now to do some red and black. So I have my R46, it's my strong red. First problem solved. <laughs> and I'll make this one red. This one red. I'm just kind of doing some of them red and some of them black. Okay, and then this star will be red. The other star will be black. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Kylie. Thank you. All right, and then this little have a nice day hammer around the face, it has these, like the black has a red outline. So that's what I'm putting in now. Thank you, defects. Oh, thank you so much, Urban Viking. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Lots of love to your wife and enjoy your games. go. And I'm going to use T7 for the black. 
I'll see if it's dark enough. It may not be, and then I'll darken it again. Yeah, it's not dark enough. So let's try T8. So this is a toner gray eight. And it goes all the way up to 10. I just don't necessarily feel that all the way up to 10 is the best idea for right here because I don't want it to be extremely dark. Oh, really? That's cool, Justin. Oh, you got some toners? That is fantastic, Kylie. It's really the best, especially if you're doing like Catwoman or Black Cat or any characters with like a dark suit. The toner ones are the best for that. Right, now the ivy ones. I wish you could marry my art. Aw, thank you. I'm just coloring over all the lines that I did for the vines to start with and then I'll color the leaves. Oh my goodness, Kylie, we started talking about the splatter and then we trailed off. I'm so sorry about that. Um, as far as big splatter, do you have any watercolor? Because I've done it with watercolor too. Um, you just have to be kind of careful that you don't oversaturate it or, or it will warp the paper. But if you're just doing a little bit, it's actually fine. Oh, Boy, I missed a bunch of comments here. That's fantastic, Kylie. I'm trying to see if I can get this a little brighter. Feels kind of dark in here. Yeah, okay. Make the watercolor, like, really get it dark, like a heavy saturation of color in that water. And then just be careful, don't put a ton on there, but just do it with that. And that should work just fine. I've done that on blanks before and it's okay, especially if you want a big splatter. Little tiny sprays, the Copics are great for, but for, uh, for a big splatter, yeah, use watercolor. Just throwing in a few extra ones here. And then I will be adding the splatter because I feel like it always looks better when it has some. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Kylie. All right, so now I'm using YG63 to just add in a little bit of tone into the center of the leaves. I don't need to do a ton because again, I'm not trying to make this part super detailed. I'm literally just trying to fill up the space a little bit. Splatter and smoosh, that's right. It's my favorite. 
So all I'm doing is just softening out the lines a little bit and blending it in with the same color, okay? And then this is the, how I do the splatter. I hold the marker and the lid like this, and I'm just gonna do it like this way so that I'm flicking away from myself. All right, and you put the, the brush tip in the lid and you flick it off the lid. Like so. And then you just turn the direction so that you get splatters going in different ways. And voila, finished. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side with the Harley Joker dealio. But before I start, I'm actually gonna cover up the face a little bit so I don't have too much, uh, too many splatters on the face because I don't need a ton. Okay, so filling up a circle is not exactly the funnest thing to do. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it on my sleeve first to take off some of the tack. So it's not so, so sticky. There we go. All right. Now let's get some splatter over here and I'm actually gonna cover Harley up a little bit because I don't wanna get a big red splatter like right in the middle of her face. That would look really bad. <laughs> well, I can do it with masking, uh, with like that masking fluid, but I, I, it takes so long to dry, I really don't wanna have to deal with that right now. And I want the splatters going this way. So I'm moving it over here. I actually might have like a blood drip coming down from the little happy face. Ooh, that would be fun. I think my red is not exactly very full at the moment. gonna very gently put a few over here so that it doesn't have like a clean line of you can see where I actually had my little mask going on so just be a little bit confusing for people all right and I want to have a blood drip coming off of the little happy face I think that would be so fun so I'm just gonna pull this stuff off now Ever so careful. Okay. This is gonna be fun. All right, so I want a little blood drip coming down off of his mouth here. I'm just dripping down. <laughs> fun. And let's put a little bit of splatter on his face right here, but just a very, very controlled amount. So I'm just basically doing it with the tip of the marker, not the whole thing. There we go. And I'm gonna do a red border around him just to help him pop a little bit more because he was just sinking into the background a little bit too much. There we go. Yeah, the whole inside of the marker is red, 100%. <laughs> All right, guys, I think I may be finished. I'm gonna consider whether I'm gonna put splatters on the top and the bottom. 
you know it may not be necessary and that's one of those things once I put it down um, I mean once I put down those colors there's no going back so I don't necessarily want to ruin it um, oh wait okay I do usually put a border around the characters and it's like a light color that's just to help tie them into the background so I just need to think about what color I'm gonna do because it needs to encompass the two of them and I go very light so I would either do like a light blue or a light purple there's purple in Harley's skin and purple is the perfect opposite to ivy and stuff so I'm probably gonna use my very lightest well one of my very lightest purples it's called BV and it has three zeros let me see yeah that's a good one so it's BV zero 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 wait you know what I'm gonna do four zeros and just start cautious here so um, it's a very very light color you may not even see it but it just brings to me, it ties the whole room together. So all I do is just a really light border. To me, I don't know, maybe it's just something that I've always kind of done so the pieces look unfinished to me without this um, but it's hardly even detectable and then once I'm done with this little bit I will be done for today and I'll be going live again on Saturday to finish up an ivy commission and then if I have time I have a black canary I need to work on next so I will be back in touch with you guys on Saturday afternoon follow my, me on Instagram or set yourself to notify here on Twitch and I'll probably give um, an hour a half an hour to an hour's warning before I begin um, and any of you that can make it, you're always more than welcome and it'll be so fun to hang out with you. Yeah, a black canary. I haven't done a black canary since like 2013. So I'm really excited about it. It's a, another one, like a full body, um, eight and a half by 11. And I was supposed to work on it in <laughs> for Niagara Falls Comic Con. And the man is being so kind and patient with me that I haven't gotten to it yet, um, but I will be doing it for him very soon, either this weekend or next week sometime. So follow along if you're interested in seeing that. You sure work won't mind. I'm sorry, Mike. Okay, final little touches right here. Guys, it feels so good to finish a commission on, on stream with you. This is awesome. All right, I am finished. Woohoo! Yay! All right, so she, these girls are done, and I can scan it, pack it up, and send it to the owner. And I'll show you guys here, because I think the lighting is a little better. Um, so yeah, here are Harley and Ivy having fun and 
It was really fun to work on this with you guys. I love you all. You rock so hard. Let me see if I can bring it a little closer. Hopefully you guys can see it. And I'll put it down on the other screen in just a second here. Here we go. Ivy has glitter on her eyes and Harley has her usual um, dark eyes. And this was so fun to work on. You guys rock. It was fantastic to be on here with you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me this whole time while I was on live. I love you all a ton. I hope you have a fantastic final day of the week. Enjoy your evening and I will talk to you all later on my next live which is happening Saturday. And thank you all again. For some reason my mouse does not want to go off of Twitch to go to OBS. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, my mouse doesn't want this to end. Anyway, thank you all. Talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye.